Oh, hello! What's that? Oh! Well, let me turn off the vacuum. <laughs> hello, welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. My name is Kevin, and it's Tuesday. Um, today, we're diving into critical reasoning and looking at another critical reasoning question type, the complete the argument question type. Um, and so I just want to talk about how we can identify those types of questions, uh, the sort of two different types that you deal with, and then also some strategies and common wrong answers, and then we'll be done. Um, so the question is always going to be basically this. Which of the following most logically completes the argument? And so you're given an argument that's going to have some premises in there, a conclusion, and you're going to have to complete it. Um, and so there's sort of, I guess, three um, different types of ways that you're going to be asked to complete the argument. One is by finding corroborating evidence. And so in these situations, sort of at the very end, the, the paragraph or the sentence will sort of end halfway and then there'll be a blank line. And so that's the answer choice um, or the way that you're going to complete the argument. And it's either going to end with since or because. And so in these situations, you're looking for a piece of evidence that's going to lend support to the argument, that's going to strengthen it and make it tighter than it already is. Um, then the other two types are a bit different. One is you're just going to be asked to sort of identify an assumption, um, and that will usually end something like assuming that, blank, blank, blank. Um, so you're going to be looking for an assumption. And then um, the other type is a prediction, um, and so you're going to have to think about um, possible pieces of information um, that would be related to the argument. Um, or excuse me, it should result from the argument. And so um, these usually are in this form, should be expected that. Um, so there's these three different types. Your strategy is basically the same for all of them. Um, sort of the same for all of them, which we can go to now. The first step is just to attack the argument. So you're going to dive in and, again, identify their premises, identify uh, the conclusion, sort of understand what's going on. And then step two is predict if you can. So um, I would say with this type, you definitely can predict. It's called prediction. Um, assumptions you can sort of predict. Um, you can at least start to identify some assumptions before diving into the answer choices. The corroborating evidence one will be a little bit harder to do any prediction for. And so that's why I say if you can. In some cases, it'll be really easy. In some cases, it'll be a little bit harder. Don't get stuck at this step. If you can't predict, that's OK. Move on to step three, which is eliminate wrong answers. So we always want to dive into the answer choices and find answers that don't work. There's a lot more answers that don't work than do work. So you should always be working from that premise of, I'm going to find wrong answers and then eliminate them. Um, there are some common wrong answers that we see with these question types and we see in other question types as well. Um, sometimes an answer choice is too broad or it's imprecise so it doesn't really fit neatly into the argument. It might just deal with too much um, when really you need something that's more refined and more specific. And these are usually, um, you're usually grappling with the right answer and this type because it sort of makes sense and you can always like give yourself these logical steps that explain it to you. But when you start explaining an answer choice and how it might be correct, that's a signal that you're walking down the wrong path. Um, and the correct answer will just be very easy to see that it fits in and you don't need to add anything to it to make it fit into the argument. Um, the second one is off topic. These are usually pretty easy to see. It just introduces ideas that aren't a part of the argument. It's just something new. You're like, wait a second. I thought we were talking about ants and now they're talking about birds. Like, what's that about? So eliminate those. And then the third one is if it's the opposite. So um, it might do the opposite of what we're looking for in the argument. So if we want um, to improve um, the roads, maybe this answer choice will actually ruin the roads or make it worse. Um, and so keep your eye out for things that make, uh, make the opposite of the conclusion uh, possible or true. Um, you might be wondering what these red numbers are. These are example questions in the official guide to the GMAT, uh, the 13th edition. And then um, there's more than this, just this as well. And then if you want to get a sense of what these common wrong answers look like, 
I labeled um, question 69. So question 69C and E are too broad and imprecise. Question 69, answer choice B is off topic. And then the answer choice D is opposite of what we're trying to achieve in the argument. So you can go and look at those to see some real world examples. All right, that is all I have for completing the argument. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I appreciate you taking the time to sit here and uh, listen to what I have to say. If you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Be excellent to the universe, and I will see you next Tuesday.